come. The following is an ECU Sports Network presentation of Inside Pirate Athletics. Inside Pirate Athletics is brought to you by ECU Health, the official health care partner of ECU Athletics. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Pirate Nation. Optimum, the official internet provider of ECU Athletics. Town Bank, every pirate needs a bank. Pizza Hut, the official pizza provider of ECU Pirates. Now, live from Tiebreakers in Greenville, this is Inside Pirate Athletics. Welcome in, everybody, and hello again. It's another episode of our Inside Pirate Athletics from Tiebreakers at Bells Fort. Up and down the ECU Sports Network on 94.3 The Game in Greenville, the IBX Media app at WNCT.com, streaming video for us tonight. Steven Igo from Hoist the Colors. I'm Patrick Johnson. Coach Godwin, what's up, guys? Joining us here. How are you, Coach? I'm doing great. A clean shaven, Coach Godwin. Partially. Partially. I still got to clean it up a little bit. Uh, I even forgot I had not really cleaned it up after uh, Danny Bill shaved me off a little bit. So uh, Danny was the guy that got to shave my mustache off today. Another successful... Mustache March. Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, we still got money coming in. I appreciate everybody that's just donated, that's uh, continued to push it socially, so social media-wise. Um, I definitely think we'll get to our 10,000 mark. And um, as Brian Bailey told me earlier today, he felt like that we're closing in on that 100,000 mark over the time that we have been doing this, the six or seven years, which – we, don't, we won't hit it this year, but we're closing in on that $100,000. And then uh, Clemson and uh, Tommy Easton over at Pitt Community College, they also participated this year. Absolutely. And Clemson, uh, I think they did T-shirts. Uh, I texted Eric and Nick. I watched some of their game against Miami on Saturday night, and I was like, y'all's mustaches are unbelievable. <laughs> so um, they, they've done a really good job in their team. Um, and then Tommy's done an unbelievable job with Pitt. You know, his mother-in-law passed away a couple years ago with ALS. So – Obviously, a lot of people affected by this disease, and we want to help out in any way we can. Well, it's been uh, a tremendous effort closing in, as, as you said, on 100,000. And uh, let's, let's hope maybe this year, but certainly next year for sure, Coach. Um, and out of the mustache, I know there's a bracket, but who had, in your opinion, Coach Godwin, who had the, bu- who had the best stash? Who was the pirate with the best stash this year? Uh, it was Jake Hunter, the guy that won. So okay. uh, you agree I'm, with the people? I agree with the people. Okay. You know? Um, I think he really worked on it for a long time. I think he said two months. I mean, he looks like a 45-year-old man with that uh, uh, the handlebar. So um, I told him today at practice, I was like, man, you look like you're 20 years younger now yeah. without that. So uh, he said his girlfriend didn't mind, though, either way. So I was okay. like, well, she's a keeper. Yeah, I absolutely. feel like he's, he's just got to keep it on, Coach. If you win best mustache, might as well just let it ride the whole season. Well, I, I would agree with that, I go. But he shaved it off, so uh, there we go. He'll hey. probably have some good facial hair uh, in the next week or so. I was going to say, maybe we could start it back. Whole new whole new yeah. deal there. So, uh, Coach Godwin's with us. What a uh, week last week. 4-0, oh, a little bit of a different schedule because of uh, Easter, but also then – uh, because of weather, but uh, a successful week. It started with the UNCW game, a game where the Pirates fell behind, uh, but uh, started to uh, come back with some big plays, and the bullpen was huge in that game. Yeah, super proud of our guys. Started out down 4 nothing, had a great crowd, so of course the crowd's like probably scared to death and sitting on their hands, and I thought, you know, Chad's getting a big swing off a two-run homer in that second inning, got the crowd back into it, and then our bullpen was phenomenal, and our offense just – Kept chipping away, and then finally, you know, we scored seven runs in our bullpen. Um, just said, hey, you're not going to get any more runs, which is awesome. Um, and it was a great crowd and a great way to start the week. And then uh, the double header, which those are always tricky on uh, Friday to navigate those, but uh, picking up two wins in one day, always huge. Yeah, for sure. And it's really hard to win college baseball games. It's really, really, really hard to win both games of the double header. And um, I thought we did some good things. Um, of course, the pitching was really good. I mean, to play a doubleheader and throw four pitchers, I don't know if we've ever done that in my coaching career at East Carolina. Uh, we only use seven on the weekend, which um, there's going to be a lot of guys that have to pitch tomorrow night, so that, that works out well. Mm-hmm. And then offensively, I thought we did enough. Um, I didn't think we were great on any of the days. Of course, the wind was uh, right. really blowing in. But you hit the ball on the ground a lot. You yeah. made that adjustment. Yeah, we did, and I uh, appreciate those guys. But we were able to come through in the clutch and execute some different things, whether it be a bunt or a squeeze, which everybody talks about. 
Um, and then Sunday, I thought we came out with a ton of energy. I just wish we'd have scored a few more runs on Sunday later in the game and kind of just pushed it open. But I thought some guys came off the bench and did a good job, like Colby Wallace came off the bench and had a good at bat, but he made two hell of a plays at third base even after that. I mean, you got the no-hitter going, and it's, of course, a swinging bunt. And uh, in the dugout, I was like, hey, Dixon, you ain't got 92 in your back pocket like Colby does. And uh, it made it bang, bang. And the umpires had enough field to call him out on the field and then go to review. If they'd have called him safe on the field, I think he would have been safe. But because they called him out, he was right. out. Not enough evidence to overturn. <laughs> right. So – um, but I thought Richie and Bill were really good on uh, Saturday. I go who had a birthday Friday. I didn't know if you knew that. So happy I birthday, Stephen. Hey, by the way, everybody. sorry that I, I mean I actually you saw it, but game, I was locked man. in. So uh, how old are you now? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. 30, big thirty-two. Old, man. Doesn't look a day over thirty-one, does he? He looks like he's twenty-one. He does. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't believe you. Before I go, uh, uh, ask you something. I did want to just seize on the replay. How, how you know? It's a couple years of this. East Carolina's kind of always had it. Uh, as it, uh, do you feel like it's evolved? I think there's a new system this year too. Uh, we got more cam. We got more cameras. Uh, we got cameras in the line, which we got those last year. So right. there's six views. Uh, it's always tricky though because some people that are manning the cameras got to be manning them the right way. Um, of course, at UTSA they didn't work on Sunday, so you still have to be able to play the game of baseball. At Elon, when we played, there was no review, which it is what it is. You're playing the game of baseball. It's like back to old school ways, which is different, but it's equal on both sides. Yep. Coach, I, I want to go back to UNCW for a second just because y'all did such a good job for stats this year. And, you know, obviously, Tanner Thatch, a great player. and um, I don't know, did y'all have the game planning specifically for him because he's such a good player? Or was it more just pitchers executing in those at-bats? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I think yep. Coach Knight uh, did a good job of telling them, hey, don't let this guy beat you. Um, and his last at-bat, he was – it would have been a three-run homer Actually, it would have been a two-run homer. It was uh, not the time run that played. And I think Sheik had thrown two sliders. And A.K. Lane never says, I'm throwing my fastball. I said, awesome. Let's go for it, man. And uh, because he had been kind of sitting on the slider, he got beat a little bit, popped it up. So I think a little bit of both. But just not allowing him to get into counts or in positions where there's a lot of guys on base to be able to beat us. But our pitchers definitely executed pitches against him. You talked about the execution offensively. I, I honestly have a fact that fact check this, but a, a fan told me this weekend, Coach, was the, the first series, I think since 2019, y'all didn't hit a home run, but y'all still swept the series. So what does that kind of say about your team still finding ways to score, even though you may not be able to hit the long ball with windy conditions or whatever? Yeah, I mean, you got to be able to win games in all different, time, all different ways. I mean, you go back to the regional last year um, in the UVA game that we lost 2-1. to one. I mean, the wind's galing in for both teams. Mm -hmm. And – um, you got to learn how to win games like that. So it's just preparedness. I mean, whether you win 20 to zero or 20 to 19 or two to one, you've got to figure out those ways. And we've been in a lot of one run games this year and I don't have the stats in front of me, but um, that's going to pay dividends in the long run. Double header, as we talked about on Friday, uh, did that take you back at all to the, what, the post COVID year where it was it did. four game series? It, it did not because uh, I was thinking, I don't know if we have been this deep into the season in a long time yeah. where we haven't had at least one doubleheader. Last year, I know we played a doubleheader against Liberty because of weather. We played a doubleheader against UCF Easter weekend last year. Um, which I think we played a doubleheader on Thursday and That's then right. played one game on Friday that we barely got in because that weather was coming right. through. So um, normally we've definitely played a doubleheader. So I was just happy that it took us this long to get to the doubleheader. With Jake Hunter, uh, he ended up finishing the uh, second game for you on uh, Friday. And uh, you start Norby. Uh, is Jake still eligible, still possible to start? Is he going to be to the bullpen now or is that sort of a fluid situation? Um, he's our Swiss Army knife, so he will be available in the bullpen tomorrow night. Um, we're going to start Aaron Roller. He's going to be our first closer that starts the game tomorrow night, Aaron Roller, and then we'll go to the bullpen and we'll figure it out. So, um, But Jake can do multiple – as Norby, as Eric Ritchie, which I know he hasn't started, as Jaden Winter, which he has not started, but they all can serve multiple roles, as Chris Kaler. Um, so we've just got to get all those guys in there and – if they can really get to the mentality of that 22 team on those certain days that we're just going to close out innings, I think that's going to allow us to be the best 
pitching staff that we can be. We're going to talk more about uh, that coming up in our uh, next segment and uh, talk more about the weekend. Your nationally ranked uh, Pirate baseball team back home next Tuesday. They'll take on Elon. That's a midweek game. First pitch is scheduled for six, and you can get your tickets by heading to ecupirates.com. Of course, the Pirates will play tomorrow in Raleigh against number 19, in C State at 6 o'clock, and that game can be heard on the uh, ECU Sports Network, 94.3 The Game, at 6 o'clock with uh, Scotty Rogers and Coach O. All right, we'll be right back with more Inside Pirate Athletics on a gorgeous Monday here in Greenville. Stay with us. Tiebreakers in Greenville. Did you know Greenville Utilities spends money on helping their customers spend less money? That's right. Get a free energy audit at no cost to you or find out different ways you could save on your utility bills at GUC.com. Greenville Utilities proudly powering the Pirates. Tony Cannon, our guy uh, from GUC here tonight, the Team Boneyard uh, hat. Thank you, Tony. Always great to see you, and uh, always great to see uh, everybody who's here with us uh, tonight at uh, Tiebreakers. Even Pirate Al with that uh, hat. That's something else. Looks good on you, Pirate Al. Looks good on you. All right. We are <laughs> – we continue on here with uh, Coach Godwin. Uh, and then, uh, well, tomorrow it's NC State, and it's uh, going to be a, a huge atmosphere, as you know. Two top 20 teams, uh, the rivalry factor is just a lot going in whenever you play one of these uh, in-state games, particularly this one. And the baseball, it's just in the state and in the region so good. The midweek games, it always seems like it's a, a top 25 matchup every time out. Yeah, there's a lot of great baseball in the state of North Carolina. Um, 
think University of North Carolina's only lost four games, and they lost two of them to us. That's yeah. pretty impressive. They had a big so weekend. They had a big weekend uh, at Wake Forest, which I actually got to watch parts of every one of their games and a lot of the game yesterday. Uh, but NC State, Elliott's done a great job. Coach Avent, their coaching staff, their players, uh, they're really good. We're really good. So um, this is what it's all about. You get to go to a hostile environment and to see how good you are. And uh, for one game, it's not going to make our season. It's not going to break our season. I know for some fans it might, but um, we're excited about the opportunity to go in to compete against a really quality opponent that uh, the fans are really passionate on both sides. And it's a Johnny Holstaff deal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Aaron Groller's going to get the ball to, to begin the game, and then we'll keep passing the ball. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a lead late so we can pass it on to the big boys down there in the back end of the bullpen. Coach, we did have a question from a fan earlier just about Jackson DiLorenzo's had his, his moments as a freshman. Just how's he doing, and is he, is he a guy we could maybe see this, this week pitching? Well, I mean, I wish I had the crystal ball. I yeah. mean, Jaden Winter needs to get back out there as well. D'Lo needs to get back out there. Um, Corey Costello needs to get back out there. Chris Kaler needs to get back out there. And what I just told the team at the end of practice is look at our schedule. We've got four road games this week, and then we got a five-game week next week. So – some guys that haven't pitched recently are going to have to get the ball. Also, look at years past. Trey Savage's freshman year, he throws at Campbell. He's awful. We gave him like a three-week break of him not pitching because we were like, hey, man, we got to get him better. And then at the end of his freshman year, he's a go-to guy at the bullpen. Eric Ritchie last year didn't pitch a lot at the beginning of the season. Then at the end of the year, you know, he broke his finger in the first regional game against Oklahoma, which a lot of people don't know about. We wish we had him available for the rest of the regional, but he couldn't throw a baseball because he broke his finger. Um, uh, you know, even Danny last year, Danny did pitch a lot early, and then at the end of the season, he's pitching in every game. So um, just need to keep those guys positive and keep working because we're going to need them. When you see a situation like that, what, and I know it's case by case, but you're specifically working on what when you do, let's say shut a guy down, but you get him in a mode where he's, you're going to work on him in practice. What, is that in, what does that entail? Well, I, I say that. I mean, they're still available, so you yeah. can't, that's the fine line. Um, right. Sometimes you have to work with a guy and just go, hey, man, he's not available tomorrow because we threw so many pitches in the bullpen. So AK has to do that on a case by case basis, but really just grabbing them and having conversations and, um, of course, Chris Kaler is working on his all-speed stuff. Uh, Jaden Winter is working on a two-seam fastball to go along with his four-seam. So there's different stuff for each guy. Coach, we asked you earlier, you know, about the AMAC situation now at Makarevich, and you guys will see him tomorrow. Just is it? I don't know. Any? I don't know. If, if advantage is the right word, but he kind of knows you guys. But y'all know him as well. So is that? I don't know. Is that cancel each other out, or is it just part of the situation? I think it's the way we handle the situation. And you know, I met with the leadership group today. I talked to you guys. It's look. He was part of our team for four years. He's not a part of our team now. Um, that doesn't mean that we hate him. It just means that we got to worry about our guys. We got to play East Carolina baseball. So um, it's no different for one of their other better players, whether it be whoever it is, like we've got to do what we do and then we don't worry about them, let them do what they do. And if we do what we do at a high level, then most likely we'll win the game. And obviously they're, you know, state's really offensive. So just as you look into them, and I don't know if you've started that process yet, is that kind of the classic state team under Avon? They can really hit the ball? They can really hit the ball. And then they, you know, try to mix and match you at the bullpen with guys that have good stuff. So, um, you know, it's – you throw the stat sheet out the, out the window. I don't – haven't looked specifically at their offensive numbers. I know they're really good, but I feel pretty confident that we're pretty good too. So um, our numbers might not be that. But, hey, you know what, we played some really good competition. So um, I'm going to take the purple and gold with me to Raleigh. So that's who I'm going with. And uh, we'll see who the better team is at the end of the night. We talked a lot about – Justin Wilcox in last week, Coach, I thought he, he called extremely well this weekend, and we saw him, you know, gun down a runner as well. So just how good was it to see J-Dub kind of back to his old self? It's great, man. I love seeing him and Star just playing with positive emotion. Um, that's one thing that we got to continue to work on as an entire group. Uh, I think the game can wear on you as a position player, especially when you play doubleheader, and then you flip around and play an early game on Saturday. But um, those guys are – continue to grow and we want to play our best baseball at the end of the season. I know everybody wants us to win the national championship today, but we want to play our best brand of baseball at the end of the season. Uh, McChrystal, we, we talked a lot about his offense, but Coach, it just feels like defensively he's made a, a huge jump too behind the plate. 
He has. A lot of credit goes to uh, Coach Lartigue, um, actually Justin Wilcoxon, Walker Barron, who push him, um, and they have conversations. But uh, a lot of it has to go with just Ryan's maturity of, no offense, growing up mentally and just focusing on the process of getting better every day and being consistent to what makes him go well catching and offensively. And I've been super proud of the way he's gone about his business. We're talking uh, pirate baseball with Coach Godwin uh, here, ECU, uh, with a uh, four and O week, uh, and uh, picked up. Uh, Look at all these guys on their phones over here. I'm a little bit disappointed in them right this second, but uh, the players, yeah, they're yeah. not hanging on every word. They're, they're well, and you know, I know they just got out of the weight room, so they're checking their phone for the first time in like four hours. So okay. I guess that should cut them a little slack. You should. Yeah. Yeah. You should. They'll be locked in when they get out. They'll there. be locked in when they get in. Shaq was not though. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Shaq was not on his phone. Where, where did? Yeah. We, we've talked about this before. You've <laughs> talked about it a lot of times. The name Shaq for Joey Barini. Where did it come from? He had really big cleats his freshman fall. They were high tops. They were high tops, and he was even smaller than he is right now. So you can imagine how big those cleats looked on him. Somebody was like. God, man, you look like you got Shaquille O'Neal shoes on. So that's where Shaq came from. That's the cool thing about baseball, and you get a nickname, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. I mean, I asked him if he didn't like it. He said, Coach, go with it. So, yeah. hey, we've been with it for four years. What name did you get a nickname? CG. CG. Which? It stuck. That stuck. I mean, that was pretty easy. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Coach Godwin. We got uh, we got Barini. Who else we got here tonight? We got Cam Clunch and Danny Bill. We're gonna make Danny go last. Okay. Yeah. Close it out. Yeah. As you who you want to go with first? You want to? Uh, Shaq's gonna hit lead right. off, and then Clunch is gonna hit in the middle. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we'll get Joey Barini. Shaq will join us. Coach Godwin going to uh, take a break, and uh, we'll bring Joey Barini in. Hey, football fans, season tickets are on sale now. Those season tickets start at just $115, and payment plans are available to purchase your tickets at the ecupirates.com. Joey Barini joins Stephen Igo and myself after this timeout on Inside Pirate Athletics on the ECU Sports Network from Tiebreakers.
Locked On to Inside Pirate Athletics, live from Tiebreakers in Greenville. Hey fans, the softball team back at home this weekend. UTSA comes to Max R. Joyner Stadium, the Max. First pitch for Friday's game is scheduled for 5 p.m. Admission to all softball games free all season long. They will play UTSA Saturday at 4 and then a noon game on Sunday. So uh, should be uh, dry weather at least, a little chillier than it is today. Great weather and uh, fantastic weather is expected tomorrow for the uh, matchup between number 12 ECU and number 19 North Carolina State in uh, Raleigh tomorrow. Joey Barini joins us uh, here as uh, we talk uh, Pirate Baseball. Joey, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Awesome for you to be by. Those, those cleats, I know that's a story that... Uh, <laughs> That is, that is talked about by Coach Godwin and yourself. So, did, were they new to you? Did you bring them from your high school? No, nah, they, were, they were the first pair of cleats I got when I got to campus. So, yeah, they're not new to me. Were you, with the high tops, what was yeah. that? A, was yeah, they were, they were above my ankle. They were, <laughs> I mean, they basically looked like shack shoes. That's from the name. comes from Ryder. Ryder, we were taking ground balls one day, and he said I had shack shoes on, so... That just stuck from there. <laughs> were they like loose at all? Or no, they were just really bulky, like, okay. like what catchers wear, I guess. Right. No. So I guess similarity. So you weren't so light on your feet. No, not at all. <laughs> they were like they were like bricks on my feet. You talked about uh, Ryder referencing Ryder Giles there. Who were some of the guys when you entered the program that kind of shepherded you uh, yeah. along? Uh, definitely Ryder and Zach. Just watching them every day, and Norby a little bit too with being in the middle infield, but just watching how they go about uh, their business every day and what they do and just seeing how they do it has really helped me. Who are some guys that you're uh, kind of mentoring now? Uh, definitely Nick Parm, Nate Chrisman a little bit. He's he's already up there, though. He's he's good. And then uh, i say Nick Parm and Keenan Bowman a little bit. Joey, when you, I think we had Jacob Starlin on this show a few weeks ago, and uh, the little moment went viral where you didn't. <laughs> you know, hit his glove bag and didn't dap him up. And Coach Palumbo said you had to work on your infield yeah. culture. So have, you, have y'all corrected that issue since then? Yeah, I didn't even know it happened until I saw it posted on Twitter the next day. I felt bad about it, but no, our chemistry is fine. We're pretty much best friends. I mean, we, we've lived together every year since we've been here. So, And y'all turned a few double plays uh, this weekend, a big one obviously late in, in uh, I think, Friday's game. Uh, just, you know, that combination continued to improve that. How important is that for you guys to yeah. you know, hit, hit those double plays? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, double plays are huge to get out of the inning. And then, yeah, just me and Star, we, we've taken so many ground balls together in practice and games and stuff. Like, we know, we know where each other's going to be at all times. So we've heard the Shaq story. Walk us through your, your recruitment process. What led you to East Carolina, you know, years uh, ago? Yeah, I've, ever since, well, my, my parents, my uncle, and my grandpa came here. So that was, I've always had like a link to ECU. And um, I think my, I've always followed like ECU football and stuff. And then my junior year, Coach Godwin saw me play at state games and then offered me after that and decided to come here. It's so a pretty quick decision. How long, yeah. how long did it take you? Uh, it took like a week. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, I, I pretty much knew I was coming here. I don't know what, so. And so, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, Joey, but, you know, you started as a switch hitter. I think you're still technically listed as a switch yeah. hitter. I, I guess we'll just roll, roll with it. Um, you know, talk about the decision to, to eventually just go lefty. Yeah. And do you still, I don't know, do you still dabble switch hitting at no, all? No, no, I don't at all. Um, I've, well, I've never really I, in high school. I didn't really like commit to it full time until my, my junior year. So I never really had like the reps against lefties because in high school there wasn't a lot of lefties that I faced. And then once the season came around, I didn't really face much lefties because I was just coming in the game and hit right-handed. So my sophomore summer, I, I was still switch inning, and then I was struggling right-handed. So I was like, "There's no really no need to do this." So I just started hitting lefty and started from there. We are uh, talking with uh, Joey Barini, uh, second team all-conference shortstop last year for the Pirates. 26 starts this year, started 61 of them at short last year, and you kind of won that uh, competition, have held on to the position uh, since. Um, you know, as you went into last year knowing it was kind of an open competition, what's your mindset when you're, when you're competing for an open spot yeah. like that? Yeah, it definitely raises your senses a little bit. Yeah, you want to compete more. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> With uh, NC State tomorrow, you're from the Triangle, so uh, you know it's a big game. You're, mm -hmm. you're a pirate, a legacy pirate at that, so you know how important this uh, game is. Uh, 
just a little extra juice when you play a yeah, rivalry yeah, like for that. Sure. Any any Carolina, UNCW, State, Campbell, extra juice. I love playing them. You know anybody on the team outside um, of AMAC? Yeah, mom. Um, State, no. I don't. Okay. I don't really know anyone from State. Any Any of your teammates that have gone on to play when back from high school at Orange, or are you the um, are you the are you the main guy? There's a one of my teammates is at Charlotte right now. Okay. I think that's the only one playing. So you'll see him in a few yeah, weeks. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Charlotte being in the league too, that's, that's mm-hmm. a different twist yeah. this year too. That'll, give, that'll give a little bit of a rivalry to it too. Yeah, and a bus trip. Yeah, for what that's <laughs> worth. Uh, what uh, ultimately? What are your goals and plan? I don't know what they are in season, but just with your uh, postgraduate, post uh, baseball, uh, what are you looking at? Uh, right now, I'm planning on uh, graduating in the fall from in construction management. My dad's a contractor, so I plan on going into that after baseball. Awesome. Joe, I want to ask you, you know, we talked a little bit about the wrist, you know, off the air, but just uh, so fans can appreciate it, kind of what you've been going through there as far as yeah. dealing with some discomfort, but also playing through it and everything. Can you just walk us through what you're, you know, fighting through there? Yeah. Yeah. So the last scrimmage in, um, last scrimmage of the fall of Purple Gold, I got hit by a pitch and broke a bone. The triquechum in here, and uh, I rehabbed it over the winter, and it didn't really get much better. And then... I came back and got an MRI, and there was a partial torn ligament. So we had to find a way around that, and so I could be able to play. So I got a, I've been, I got a cortisone shot. I think the weekend before the Liberty, I think it was, and uh, it's it got worse at first, but it's gotten better now. And it's just something I got to deal with. It's not, it can't be an excuse if I'm going to go out there and play. So. And, you know, your swing obviously starting to come around, so is that just part of it, too, like learning how to maybe deal with it? Yeah, Has it affected that at all? Yeah, a little bit, and just keeping the confidence with my swing. Right. You, hey, feel, Joe, you feel like you're finding that rhythm, though? Yeah, play? for sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Joey, great to have you on, man. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Continued Joey. success this year. Joey Barini, Shaq with us here on Inside Pirate Athletics. ECU Athletics would like to thank Young's Physical Therapy, the official physical therapy provider of the Pirates. Cam Clonch, one of the uh, respected veterans on the ECU roster, joins us next, so we're looking forward to talking to him. Thanks to uh, Scotty Rogers in our studio tonight, also David Horn, our on-site producer. This is Inside Pirate Athletics on the ECU Sports Network. There is a special... Great to have uh, Cam Clonch with us uh, now, the uh, 6'4 senior, Mooresville High School, and uh, he joins us here on Inside Pirate Athletics. Before we uh, get to Cam, a reminder to download the new Royal Farms app from the App Store or Google Play today. New Rofo Rewards members will get a free, any size Royal Farms coffee for signing up. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. Cam, thanks for uh, joining us uh, here. You're on Stevens show earlier today so i hope not to drag you down too much after that uh, award-winning uh, performance but uh, steven said you were fantastic on the program uh, obviously it's a, a year where uh, your senior year you got a lot of goals you want to leave a legacy uh, here and you're always trying to stay ready 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. But <clears throat> yeah, just trying to stay ready and uh, be there when my numbers go. You are a guy that uh, Coach Godwin has cited as uh, a respected leader in the locker room. Who were the guys that kind of brought you along when you entered the program and and uh, maybe helped you, you know, develop into that leader you are today? Yeah, I think a big uh, a big part of that is Franny, and he's actually back with us this year, and he's been in the dugout a little bit and at practice and um so yeah franny was a big part of um who i am today and and then zach um me and zach talked all the time and i would say those two are probably the main guys for me that brought me along and uh, helped me help shape who i am today how uh how cool was it to see thomas francis go back and i don't know is it, is it weird at all that he was your teammate now your coach or is it always, has it always kind of been that a little bit no it's it's always kind of been like that but Man, Franny's the same guy today that he was when he played. So, uh, very positive and always upbeat guy. Uh, Cam, when you look at, you know, obviously your, your time here, let's go back first to your recruitment. What led you to East Carolina out of Mooresville at that time? And then, uh, you know, four years later, how, how much, uh, you know, do you still love that decision you made? Yeah, I still love that decision. Uh, I don't regret coming here or staying here. Um, but, for me, it was the coaches, and uh, it felt like home away from home. So, And you committed pretty early, right? Uh, we talked before. Yeah, I committed, uh, I think, the summer after my freshman year, or maybe the fall going into my sophomore year. I'm not sure. Right somewhere around there. And we, we were kind of joking earlier. It is April 1st. You, you were kind of a pitcher and hitter then. So now that Cliff's in the building. Uh, the real question is, when are we going to see you on the mound again? Well, I forgot to <laughs> peek in AK's office today, but um, I have been throwing a little bit. I don't know if Coach Godwin really knows that or not, but <laughs> I have been throwing off the mound a little bit, just kind of joking around. But um, who knows, maybe, maybe if we're up like 10 or 15 runs in a conference game and we need to save some arms, I, I, can, I can definitely throw it over the plate. Do you still have any breaking stuff, or is it all fastballs? No, I, I can I can spin the slider for sure. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll see it. Uh, Cam, a big, big week ahead, obviously, and going on the road at NC State and then at FAU. I know you all take it one game at a time, but what type of challenges kind of this week present just being away from home? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good test. Um, I didn't know this until today, but we haven't won over there since I've been here. Uh, so we got a good test tomorrow night, but I think we're well prepared. And as long as we play our brand of baseball, then we'll be fine and we'll come out on top with a win. And then uh, this weekend, <clears throat> I think, is going to be really good for us. FAU is a new team in the conference, and I'm sure they've heard a lot about the Pirates, and uh, they, they don't want us to win the conference again. So they're going to give us their best shot, but so are we. So. And you're getting to play some ball down in Florida, so there's, that's always a good thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> nice weather, and uh, if you can't get up to play there, then yeah, you probably don't need to be playing. Absolutely. Uh, big uh, road week for the Pirates, as, uh, as Stephen mentioned. Uh, and we got Cam Clonch with us uh, here. Uh, not only Franny, but you got Brian Packard back. I'm, I'm sure that was a, a name you knew about uh, as well. Uh, how cool is it to have some of those guys who've lived what you've gone through and, and have uh, – played for coach Godwin back now and in roles where they're helping yeah it's awesome I mean they're they're fresh out of the game so um they kind of bring like a different perspective and they can relate to you maybe a little better than uh coach Palumbo or coach Godwin but um they've been great and a great addition uh this year and it's it's awesome to have those guys around. You're one of the, uh, I think, at least two guys on the roster that have a state championship uh, ring. That had to be a pretty cool moment for you. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Danny Beal is looking at me right now, but we took them out in the semifinals. Okay. Yeah. Beal's we, team. Did we you, took, we took two them? of three. Did I did. I did hit against them. How'd that go? Uh, my first two at-bats didn't go good. Okay. And then, but you roughed him up when he counted. Yeah, I, okay. I did. Okay, I don't know. He's, he's 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 no selling it right now over there. Yeah, he hears a lot about it um, <laughs> from various people. 
So we, we talked about uh, Franny getting into coaching. Do you do you have any desire to get into coaching, or you think you're you – You've know, done some instruction work in the offseason, haven't you? With yeah, you? I do some lessons here and there. Me and Carter Cunningham kind of tag team uh, some lessons, and then I have another – I have a nine-year-old that I do normally every Monday. Um, so it's fun, and I mean – I don't know. We'll we'll see about the coaching thing. So might take too much of your hunting time. Up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not not a good not a good uh, profession if you want to hunt. So is that just it for you hunting? You fish too? I fish a little bit too, but um, I, I enjoy hunting a little more. In a normal season, if you could, do, what what's your favorite season hunting wise? Um, probably the month of November. Okay. It's the second split of the duck season, and um, it's probably the best time to be in the deer woods. So that would probably be the best season, I guess. Yeah, I got you. Well, that's uh, can't can't uh, be coaching and go into doing that too much. <laughs> no, sir. You've got to structure your your day a little different. That's right. Uh, hey, Cam, great to have you here. We really appreciate it, and uh, it's been a, a fantastic uh, pirate career for you. And I know you're uh, looking forward to uh, the stretch run here and an opportunity to get to uh, Omaha. So uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right, Cam Cam Klotz with us. Great to talk to him. All right, uh, we're going to get Beal's version of this uh, matchup in the the playoffs during your high school days. Uh, Danny Beal will join us uh, here when we return. It is uh, Inside Pirate Athletics on the ECU Sports Network. from tiebreakers in Greenville. ECU lacrosse, they'll be back at Johnson Stadium on uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, April 2nd. First draw scheduled for five against Clemson. 
Admission is free, so be sure to head out and support your Pirates. Take in a little lacrosse before you uh, listen to the uh, game against the uh, Wolfpack on uh, the ECU Sports Network. And Danny Beal joins us uh, here to talk uh, about the uh, season and that matchup. Uh, great to see you, Danny. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. So, Appreciate clutch. You guys. <laughs> Let's get your version of the clutch story. You got a clutch launch yep, hit sure off did. of you uh, in high school, um, but you you owned him the first two ABs. Yeah, I got him out the first two at bats, and then he hit a he hit a three run bomb to take the lead and over a green monster. Yeah, their school's blue, so it was a blue monster. But yeah, it was it, he hit it away. So that is for sure. It's one of the I think to this day the furthest home run or one of that he's hit off me. So yeah, it wasn't wasn't my best moment, I guess. And you guys at both at the time had both committed to ECU, so you knew. Yeah, I vividly remember me and CJ Boyd crying afterwards and taking a picture with him while he's ear to ear grinning, and they're going to the state championship. We're going home, so. Yeah, I'm sure he remembers that and loves that. So, and, and you guys are roommates. roommates. Yeah, we are. So you hear about this probably a couple times a all week the time. at least. And his yeah. little brother is just as torpy as he is, so he'll always send me the he'll always send me the video of it on Twitter every once in a while just to stick it to me. Oh, but. there's a video. Oh, there is. Clotch, tweet that to me. I want to see the. Uh, uh, you got a great attitude about it, uh, Danny. He's in uh, communications. You want to get into uh, communications yep. as, as yep. well? So, yep. what what specifically would you like to do? This essentially is yeah, that right? I've talked to I go a bunch, and obviously the stuff with Pirate Radio that I've done. But this is kind of the area of work I want to get into if it's after baseball or coaching or whatever it is. But this eventually is something that I really enjoy. Why don't we get you here next year and we'll push I go? <laughs> yeah, out. I'll, I'll take a I'll, I'll take a leave of absence. You can fill in. Well, is there a particular? Sp I mean, obviously baseball, yeah. but are there some other sports that you really like to watch and talk about and that sort of thing? All of it. I mean, I don't really have a specific niche, but like. I love Boston sports because my dad's from New Hampshire, so I've grown up Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics, the whole deal, and I was born in Chicago, so we're kind of de facto Cubs fans because we, we lived a block away from Wrigley and had season tickets when I was six oh, wow. months old, so there's pictures of me like in a stroller in Wrigley. And, <laughs> and so, the bleachers? Yeah, in the bleachers. That's we had, awesome. We had season tickets behind home plate, but we would always make it out of the bleachers too sometimes, but no, it was... I enjoy all sports. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, keep track of all of it. So. Favorite uh, Cub? I'm a Cubs fan, so... I, mine's a little blast. I, li I like Mark Pryor, but yeah. that's kind of. I think my favorite would be Kerry Wood. I have a Kerry Wood jersey at the house, actually. Okay. So Kerry see, Wood. See, mine's Sosa, but that's blast. Yeah, yeah. See, that's yeah. It's, it's but they might reunite. Yeah, they I might hope reunite. so. I hope so. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Danny Beal with us. Uh, not the swiftest of starts, but you've really turned it on. What's kind of clicked for you? Um, it's just figuring out some stuff mechanically and just having a good mindset going through it all. Obviously, a coach got to mention earlier, but the same kind of thing happened last year where it didn't start off the best and finally turned it around towards the end of the year and turned out pretty good. But, um, no, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's just having a good mindset through it all and not taking a game that I don't pitch well in too big and not taking my wins too small and just kind of the same thing and moving forward and not just – Relaxed. It's all like, about having fun. Like a position player in, in your role, I mean, there's always tomorrow. Yeah. You know, where if you're a starter, you do have some time. You got to, so you got to have that short memory. Yeah. I gotta imagine. Yeah. No doubt. I, I think that's something that I've always really enjoyed is being able to be available to pitch more than one time in a weekend. And if you have a good outing, you get to build on it. If you have a bad one, you get to flip the script. So it's something that I've taken a lot of pride in. And I've said it before, but the best ability is availability. So. And Dan, you're pitching a lot, man. 15 appearances in 26 games, and that obviously you threw a lot last year. So, how, how, like, what type of care goes into, you know, keeping your arm fresh, bouncing back? Because you, you do seem to bounce back pretty well from appearance to appearance. Uh, it's a lot. I mean, it certainly sleep goes into a lot of it. Our trainer Logan Rupp, now who's new this year, has been phenomenal, and he helped us out a little bit last year. Um, but he's helped a ton, and obviously just keep my body in the best shape of nutrition or whatever else. But I think, and honestly, I joke with AK about it, but it's honestly just like a mindset thing. Like if you tell yourself you're okay, you're okay. And I've and even before the year started, he's like, "You're a senior, like you're gonna you're gonna pitch a lot, dude." And I'm like, "I'm ready." And I've I've was you know finally got into college baseball a little bit watching wise in 2021. I was a freshman, and Kevin Copps obviously was at Arkansas and pitched what seemed like every game, and I was you know just. And I'm thrilled by the fact that he could even do that to begin with. And then I've kind of tried to take that mindset with me and just be able to pitch every game no matter how you're feeling. You talked about, you know, mechanically getting right. I mean, you have so many different arm slots and pitches. <laughs> so is, is that like play a role in it too? You kind of have to figure out, I don't know, like all the mechanics for each arm slot and everything? Yeah. I mean, sometimes stuff can, you know, get out of whack when you're throwing a bunch and your body's getting tired and something's slacking and something's off. But 
we have such a good coaching staff and such good video that we can, you know, we can identify in a second and fix it right away. So it's just a credit to them. And obviously being able to fix it so quickly is just something that, you know, I take a lot of pride in with them helping me out. So what's it like watching, you know, your Savage and Root do, the, do their thing right now? It's awesome. It, it did shades of Gavin and Wiz when I was a freshman when we went to Vandy that one year. But it's like you roll into a weekend series. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It's like. It feels like you've already won the series with how you know you got the two guys going. So you know, obviously, you get a win on Friday. It's like, well, we got a pretty good chance to take the series tomorrow. But they're fun to watch, dude. And they've got such good attitude about it all. They're not too cocky. They're not too you know flamboyant and all about themselves. They're real team guys. And it's Root's grown a lot from last year, as I'm sure you guys have heard. And he's been great. And obviously, Trey is phenomenal and a true ace and a future first rounder. You guys, 26 games in this season day. We heard a lot in the preseason about kind of just the leadership group, and you're a part of that, of course, you know, Cam and Joey as well. So how do you feel like you guys have done, you know, kind of handling the ups and downs at times during the season and staying on track and everything? Yeah, I mean, it, we've talked about it a lot, but this is a really close-knit group. Like, we've, this is the closest team I've ever been a part of just in terms of everybody gets along with everyone. There's no, like, subtle beefs between players. It's everybody. Except you and Clutch with the whole <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, That's never going to change. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, it's good. We all get along. Like, there's no, like I said, beefs between anyone, and we're all playing for each other, and I think that's the biggest thing is we're not playing for the coaches. We're not playing for, you know, the fans. It's We obviously embrace those aspects because we love them, and, love the fact that they care so much about us, but we want each other to succeed, and that's why I think we've been so good with the guys that haven't been playing as much, like Clonch or whoever else, have embraced the fact that, hey, I want the guy that's next to me just, as do, just to do just as well as I am. So. Um, who are some guys that uh, kind of took you under their wing when you arrived here? There's a bunch. I mean, you obviously identify, like, Cam Colmore and Matt Bridges because they were six years, so it's like, obviously, they're going to take care of the freshmen, but Tyler Smith, I think, was the biggest one. He's one of my best friends, if not my best friend to this day. Um, he just was so open with me about, you know, hanging out with me and, you know, teaching me the ropes, not treating me like crap when I screw things up and all that stuff. I mean, he lived with Bryson Worrell, Nate Napolt, and Christian Smallwood, and I was at their house all the time, and I mean, I'd go fishing with Nate and Bryson all the time, and I'd come over and watch sports with Smitty, and it was just, it, it didn't matter that I was a freshman, they were just, I was just one of the guys, so I think that was one of those things where, at the time, I took it for granted a little bit, because I was like, oh, it's just hanging out with the guys, but now that I am a senior, and Seeing how the freshmen are like scared to almost talk to us sometimes when they first get here, it's like I understand because I was there at one point, so it's pretty cool. Who are some guys you've t really quick uh, you've taken under your wing? I think Norby is the biggest guy just because I'm, you know, I grew up with, you know, either in our conference and I played against Connor in high school. I played with Connor here, and then obviously did he hit a bomb off? No, no. Okay. actually got him okay. two ground outs when I pitched against <laughs> him. Just you. Make sure I, make sure you tell him that. Um, but no, Norby's been awesome. We worked out together this fall and winter um, when we were home and it's 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 fun because he respects all of us obviously but the fact that we have like a little hometown tie i think is the biggest thing that he cares about because you know he values family so much and so do i and i think when we're home and we're throwing with each other it just means a little bit more to him danny great to see you continued success appreciate it guys appreciate it. danny bill awesome to have him with us here great young man all of them are but uh, great to have danny all right we're gonna have cliff godwin uh, return and uh, we'll get you set for the uh game tomorrow in the FAU series when we come back on Inside Pirate Athletics.
matters where you stay. Here for the stay and Carolina hospitality. Be our guest. We'll do the rest. Arr. The Pizza Hut Big Dinner Box is more than just a meal. It's your chance to put together the perfect combination of Pizza Hut favorites to satisfy whoever's hungry. Loaded with two medium, one topping pizzas, breadsticks, and your choice of wings, pasta, or another pizza. The Big Dinner Box has something for everyone. It's perfect for meals at home, parties, and even your tailgate. The Big Dinner Box, only from Pizza Hut, the official pizza of Pirate Athletics. Additional charge for more than one topping, extra cheese, and bone-in wings were available. Product availability, prices, and participation may vary. Sunday morning. You can smell it. Game day. And the brisket you've been smoking since last night. A day to be with family, aka fellow football fans. Traditions make Sundays easy to enjoy. Beers do too. Bud Light. Easy to Sunday, easy to enjoy. Bud Light is the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Enjoy responsibly. 21 plus, copyright 2023, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. You're locked on to Inside Pirate Athletics, live from Tiebreakers in Greenville. The 10th year coach of the Pirates, Cliff Godwin, joins us uh, here. He wants to uh, weigh in on Beal v. Clonch. Yeah, um, I think Clonch has probably had about 14 at-bats off Danny Beal in his career. That's an estimation Mm -hmm. in inner squads and stuff. Um, I think he's hit about 900 with four home runs. So I think I've seen Danny get him out one time, maybe, um, that I can remember. Um, so if I was coaching against the Pirates and Danny Beal came in, I would hit Cam Clunch in every <laughs> bat at bat. Right. So that's funny how, how that way. works sometimes, yeah. though. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. is. Yeah. And and Clunch, you were talking about him today on our show. I mean, he's he's such a, a presence for you in the locker room, isn't he? Yeah, he he's built a lot like me. Super competitive. Um, of course, he wants to play. We have conversations all the time and. Um, the, the tricky thing for him now is when he comes off the bench, man, he's facing a dude. And we've talked about how, man, you got to get off the pitch machine and, like, turn it up, dude. And, like, because when you come in the game, like, you're facing, like, a closer. Like, those are the moments. And that's not easy for anybody, but we got to get you to be prepared for that. And, of course, uh, you know, he's going to have opportunities down the street. He's going to be a big piece of why we're going to have so much success at the end of the season. Of course, because he's going to have some tough at-bats, but also because – of how much he leads that group in the locker room. Four road games for you, Coach, this weekend. I'll take it one at a time. But what's the biggest key going on the road and having success away from home? We just got to be ourselves. I mean, I think it, I think UTSA was good for us. It was not a great field, no environment. Um, you know, I, I told our team this last Monday. I think I might have mentioned it here. but And this is my fault, but we're a little more white-collar today than we were in 2015 and uh, we got to get back to being a little bit more blue collar and uh, making sure that we're dialed in no matter if it's a hard practice or whatever and um, our guys are up for it because they care you know I said that last week uh, coming off uh, getting um, beat on the road at UTSA and um, our guys care they want to get better they're hungry so that's a good thing Cliff thank you good luck tomorrow and this week I appreciate you guys we'll see you in two weeks Cliff Godwin will be back with uh, us on the show in two weeks no program next week. We'll be back on the 15th for the final edition of Inside Pirate Athletics here from Tiebreakers. For Steve and I go, I'm Patrick Johnson. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody, and go Pirates!